Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jake's Take with Jacob Eliashar podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Eliashar, and I'm the chief content producer and writer of Jake's Take, the pop culture entertainment website. And I am so very excited today because one of my all-time favorite comedians is here. You, everyone, he made, since he made his debut on America's Got Talent, he has accumulated over 611,000 followers on Instagram, 2.1 million Facebook followers, and 2.2 million YouTube subscribers. He's the host of Did I Stutter with Drew Lynch, and I'm so happy to have one of my all-time favorites here. Please welcome Drew Lynch. Hey, hello. Hi, hi everybody. Thank you for that uh, amazing in, in, intro. Wow. Thank you. are so welcome, Drew. And I cannot believe it's been five years since you auditioned for America's Got Talent. I know. I know. I was just about to uh, post something about, about that. I think it's like a few weeks away since when the, the, the episode that I had, that first episode, it aired. And it's like gone by so uh, so quickly. Like I can remember everything so vividly. And I don't know if that speaks to like my memory of it all or just how how fast time flies i gotta say um one of my all-time favorite moments and still rem- remain one of my all-time favorite golden buzzer moments was your golden buzzer to howie push and you were also one of howie's first two golden buzzers because he's been on a run of acts that made it to, even to the final and in fact almost win the whole thing so could you describe that moment of once howie pressed that buzzer <laughs> Uh, sh- yeah, it was really un- un- unexpected. I, I had no idea that was, that was an option. I didn't know that that was even an outcome. Uh, so when I had auditioned, like I was just hoping to get to the, to, uh, to the next round. And, um, I was pretty nervous for doing the, the, the routine that I had planned, but I think I was more nervous for, the just 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 the interview beforehand you know like I think Howard was the one who was talking to me beforehand and um Howie was the one who had who who had hit the buzzer so it's just uh it's one of those moments that was so surreal that I I I I I asked the producers if I could take a piece of the confetti home uh because just to make sure it was real you know like I wanted to wake up the next day and check it and make sure that, that 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 yesterday, the day before had happened. So, uh, it was definitely, it was definitely, um, an experience that'll stick with me for, for forever. And then you have Radio City, the music hall, and you made it all the way to the top two and with Paul Zordon. And what did it mean to you to be one of the last two acts standing during the show's 10th anniversary season? Yeah, it's, I guess it's, I guess, I guess like it, it didn't, it didn't really hit me that I was at the end until it was over. Like, it, cause you're just in this mindset. That's yeah. It's, 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 it's like to have fun and take it all in and enjoy it. But there's also like this, this deep part of you that's like, Oh, I want to win. You know, I, I hope I, I, I hope I win. I would love to be the first comedian to, to, to do so. And everyone around me is they're they're your competitors but they're also your friends because you you're all in this shared experience together that 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 that's unlike any other so it's just a weird bag of 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 emotions and the way that that you're kind of trained to do it is you just keep doing your best every round and hope that you get to co- uh, uh, come back so yeah it just it, it it didn't hit me until it was all done all right so drew i just want to let you know that over th- this since May first, I've actually started doing a, mi- a series that's going to be celebrating America's Got Talent's fifteenth anniversary by by revealing the top fifty acts of all time, and I'm happy to say that you're part of the top fifty. Oh, thank you. You're so welcome because I think of I'm not going to reveal the guys. I'm not going to reveal where Drew landed until Memorial Day weekend right before the show starts. So you guys will be wa- able to watch it on YouTube on the Jacob L. H. YouTube page. So I just want to let you know, Drew, about that. Oh, thank you. I, yeah, I, I appreciate that. You're so welcome. So I want to leave America's Got Talent for a little bit. So how long does it take you to structure material for set? That's a good question. I would say it's uh, moving all the time. It's never like, it's never consistent, you know. Uh, I would say 
there's sometimes where I, I, I work so long on something cause I'm not satis- uh, satisfied with it. I don't think, I don't think any, any, any real comedian is ever satisfied. Like they're never like, okay, I've married this to a template. It's just, it's an, it's a, it's a, it's a ever in motion thing. So there's sometimes I'll sit down and like a joke can just write itself. Like it's just an idea happens and, and, and 20 minutes later, it, it's the, the skeleton of it is all there. So it's like, all right, let, let's go try it. And then sometimes you write something and then you revisit it a week later and then you come back and you uh, rework it. And uh, maybe the, maybe the beginning isn't so strong. So you push the middle to the beginning and the beginning becomes the middle. And then uh, the end you want to make sure is like very strong at the end. So what's the thing that's going to serve as, 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 as the bow that wraps everything up. Um, So it's just, yeah, the process is like, uh, I don't know, you never get real, you never ever really get any closure on it. So, um, yeah. All right. So outside the coronavirus, what have been some of the challenges that you faced throughout your career and how did you overcome those obstacles? Um, I would say I've taken a lot of, uh, I've taken, I've, I've taken a lot of time to, uh, rest. And I think that's, what's been one of the most challenging things for me is I'm I'm someone who likes to to stay motivated and I like to push my career first on uh, in, in ahead of everything else and I um, have had a really difficult time because you know there is work is not really an option right now what it, what it is that I this is my primary focus like in being stand up like that's just not um that's just not, it's not possible. So, uh, an actual like earth stopping thing, like this universal, uh, uh, event had to come into my life in order for me to take some time to rest and focus on, 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 on my body and recharge. And, uh, hopefully when everything picks back up, I'll, I'll, I'll be much better for it. I think we'll all be able to do, I'll be able to be much better. Yeah. And how do you think it's going to, this virus is going to change the way you perform and how other comedians are going to perform? Wow. I can't really speak for other, uh, for other comedians, but I, for me, I, I just, I hope that, I hope that this experience has, uh, really put some perspective, uh, into into play for people because I you know what 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 sometimes ends up like what is of the utmost importance at one time like you can have like uh an event like this uh, happen and 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 it really just offers some perspective and where your priorities fall when everything kind of hits the fan so I would say I just hope that uh audiences are 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 okay with jokes about this time because I know how serious it is and how seriously it's affected um, people and left its impact in a different way. Um, but I just, I really want to make sure that the work that I'm doing is, 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 is a priority or it, it, like what, what I'm talking about is important for me to talk about because time is precious. Audiences are precious. Um, uh, just things that I've taken for granted prior to this, uh, that I hope I won't, I won't have to when, when, when this is all over. Alrighty. So guys, just to let you all know, I did see Drew earlier last year when he performed at Caroline's comedy club in New York city. And one of the things that I admire and thank God there were not as many hecklers that night, but however, if you guys go on his YouTube channel, Drew has been able to handle the hecklers. And so that and why do these audience members think that they're entitled to actually go into go onto your set and showcase some negativity? Oh, uh, it's interesting. Like the relationship with the heckler for me has 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 really evolved because initially when I was when I was when I was doing stand up, like I was so self uh, self conscious about my stutter and my speech, and 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 people would shout things out to uh, rush me or, uh, they might, they, they might take advantage of the silence or the trepidation and, uh, 
there's a power shift that way. And, 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 and um, over time I've, I've, I've really learned to embrace that not every heckle is, is meant to be personal and not, and, and, and not every heckle is meant to be uh, even hurtful, you know, and my relationship is with it has changed quite a bit in that, you know, a lot of my videos out there are, are, are of moments that are just impromptu or, or, or just kind of born out of nothing. And I think that being trying to showcase that I can do that in addition to what material I can do, like it, that that's a skill set, you know, and that's something that I think can, you can really use to showcase yourself in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, in a deeper way or maybe a fuller uh, uh, version of a comedian that people might not be expecting. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that, I don't think that, uh, you know, if it's, if it's interrupting the show so much that other people aren't really having a good time, like, uh, then, you know, yeah, I think it's my job to put an end to that or make sure that everyone is in, enjoying their evening. But it, it, for the most part, you know, it, 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 it really just creates an, ex, an experience that is unique only to that audience. So no other audience could ever say, oh, the, you know, this thing happened during my show because that was only unique to that one time. Awesome. So speaking of one time, one unique time, last year you participated in the first season of America's Got Talent, The Champions. Could you describe that experience to my audience and why did you decide to com- return to compete? Why, uh, why uh, I didn't catch that last part, Jake. What'd you say? The, why did I do- return oh return to do it yeah oh um well yeah it was like you know it's the it's a bit the way I felt the first time that I did it um with in that like you know I it's I didn't really expect to go very far in in the, the first time I went and and I didn't really expect that the second time either because um you know, you're competing against people who are just amazing. Like there's just people who are just like these, these high caliber acts where there's like, there's dog trainers, there's magicians, there's acrobats, there's singers and backup dancers and dance groups and electronics and, 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 and ventriloquists. Like there's, there's so many things that it's hard to even think a comedian would be comparable just by saying the jokes or the words that they have. Like that's, that's all that we have. So to get to go back to uh, 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 to do it was a no brainer just because I get to see all these amazing acts as at, like as an audience member as well like to get to be and meet some of these people whom whether I've seen them on t- on, on, on the show before or not is still like a, a like a unique honor awesome so recently you launched your podcast did I set her and what have been some of the topics that you've tackled on your podcast? Yeah, I think I cover, uh, I cover such like ridiculous, like there's, <laughs> I cover very sh- little to nothing. It's just <laughs> sh- what, like, it's whatever happens in the spur of those weekly moments that, that, whatever happened recently in my life, that's usually what it is I'm talking about. When I was uh, traveling before quarantine, like it was oftentimes how the, how the, how the shows went. Um, And uh, there's a few different segments that I try to use as a format where like uh, there's one segment where I complain about um, uh, my girlfriend. And then there's another uh, segment where I take one of Whatever a mean comment you see is on the internet, I'll take it and I'll 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 talk about it. Well, like one that was like aimed towards me, so that's where I uh, address like a hater a week or something. And um, yeah, I would say it's a nice it's a nice tool to be able to work that muscle where you can just come up with uh, something from end from nothing and uh, try to try to try to try to take it as far as you can to see to see how. Um, uh, to see where it ends up, I guess, and, and w- w- what way you can push your comedic instincts. And then there's other stuff too. Like, you know, if you want like a specific example, I, I 
I recently did a, pod, a, a podcast where I think someone had left a comment on, 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 on my YouTube channel and I, I try to avoid like reading those comments, but every now and then someone will, some, someone will, 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 will catch my eye. And um, I think it was just someone who had uh, talked about breaking, like, like talking about my stutter in a way that uh, was used as a gimmick or it was used as, as a, uh, a uh, thing for to 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 elevate my career or to ele like to elevate whatever and that it was put on and you know I've heard comments like that my whole career so to it it didn't it it was just after hearing it so many times it just it got to a point where I felt like it was worth addressing because you know I'm a person and 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 I I want to be. I want to be taken seriously as a person, not not as some jokey, gimmicky, uh, fake uh, uh, write-off. Like I'm not someone I that enjoys being dismissed or being reduced to the way I say something. Not 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 the things that I'm saying. Like that that makes a person feel valueless. Like or that 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 the way I'm saying something is constantly being analyzed. That the things that I'm saying don't really matter. And that's you know that's another side of me that I think is important for people to see because it lets them know that it's not all jokes all the time. It's not all, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm for the most part, okay with self-deprecating jokes and being self-aware and, 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 and being silly, but I'm also human. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of things that, uh, that, uh, that it's, it's a, it's a range of things on the podcast. Awesome. I'm very, and I hope everyone listens to it because it's amazing. And now we got to talk about social media. So what are some of your favorite social media platforms to use and why do they stand out? Oh, wow. Um, well, in addition to the podcast, because I, as you know, like yours is, yours are not, your, our podcast started right around the same time. Um, you know, it, that's become such a cool thing. Like it's just different. Like there was a, you know, it's crazy how a few years ago, vine was huge and it was six seconds and now content has changed in that like people want to listen to podcasts people want to consume audio in a in a in a in a bulky fashion you know like they want to binge it for hours and um i've really i'm really excited to see hopefully where both of our podcasts are you know a year from now or two years from now and seeing how it evolves from that but in addition to that like facebook and youtube have always been um, big, big platforms for me. Those have been things, those have been platforms that I've used to, uh, help grow my, uh, my audience. Um, and, uh, yeah. And Instagram, I, 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 I really try to put different content on each of them just so there's a little bit of incentive to be on all of those things. Um, so you're not getting too much rollover content. I will not get a TikTok. I refuse to, <laughs> I ref I'm not a good dancer, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. But uh, yeah, those are, I think those are the, those are the four main. You and me both on TikTok. I haven't had the opportunity to do a TikTok yet. So yeah. I'm going, I'm going to leave that be. But however, another person in your life that is benefiting, benefiting from social media is your l lovely dog, Stella Lynch. Now she um, is her own superstar on Instagram. So how has social media stardom changed Stella? <laughs> That's such a funny question. Um, I don't know. I think she's, I think she's impervious to, to any kind of change. She's always in a good mood and always thinks that she's a queen. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter whether she has an Instagram or not. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she is uh, a star in, in, in her eyes. So Awesome. So this is my second to last question. If you had the opportunity to meet with fans who want to audition for America's Got Talent season 16 or do participate in America's Got Talent from home, what advice would you share with them? Oh, I would absolutely say go for it. I myself went to audition on a whim. I didn't think I was going to get very far or I didn't, I, you know, I wasn't, I was open to the, 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 the possibility of advancing and, and ended up changing my life. So if you have something that you think is unique and think is special and think is worth sharing, like it's, 
almost your responsibility. It's like your duty to, to share your art, give, give, give the world, you know, something new and some, some, something fresh. So I would encourage people uh, uh, to do that. Awesome, Drew. Now, where can my listeners find you? Sure. Well, I'm, my handle on everything is at the Drew Lynch. I wanted Drew Lynch, but that one was taken. So it's got to be the Drew Lynch. And then, uh, yeah, my podcast is called uh, uh, Did I Stutter with Drew Lynch. So Awesome. Now, guys, you can check out what's been going on with Jake's Take at jakes-take.com. Once again, jakes-take.com. And also, you can head over to um, my Facebook Instagram and Twitter and YouTube handles. It's Jacob Eliashar, J A C O B E L Y A C H A R. And also, I'm very excited to announce that the Jake's Take with Jacob Eliashar podcast is now on Spreaker, it's on Apple Podcasts. And also, I just found out this week that's got approval for both Spotify and Google Podcasts. So please go check them out. Drew, excuse me. <coughs> Drew, thank you so much for taking time on your schedule to talk with me. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no problem, Jake. Thank you for, ha- for having me. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for your time and consideration, and have a great day. Goodbye.